And so, but it's not only, so at the end of the age, the end of the harvest, the end of the age, the Jewish people have to come back, but they also have to become blessings again to the world. It's not just the Jewish people come back to be saved. They have to be a blessing again to the world, or the age cannot end. Genesis 12, God says, you, Abraham, I'm going to make a, a, your name great, and in you, in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. The Jewish people were born, they were supposed to be a blessing to the world. And in Messiah, they have been, because the whole world's been blessed by just a few Jewish people who came 2,000 years ago. I mean, there were thousands, but it's still a remnant. The last book of the Bible contains the, speaks to the end of the age and says that there will be 144,000 Jewish people who will witness, who will be witnesses of God. They are not Jehovah's Witness. Jehovah's Witness claim to be the 144,000, but they're not Jewish, first of all, Muslim, and they're not from the different tribes, and they've already exceeded 144,000, so what do you do with the extras, you know? <laughs> but the age means the age cannot conclude until the Jewish people come back to Messiah, period, no matter what. And we know on the very last day, we know at the very end, Zechariah 12, they're going to look upon him whom they have pierced. The whole nation will come back. But even before that day, it talks about 144,000. There's already going to be a turning back. I'm going to read, turn to Romans 11. Very important prophetic chapter about the whole age. Romans 11, Paul writing of his people and, and, and of the entire age and the church and all that together. Romans 11, and what does it say? It says this, verse 11. I say then, they did not stumble as to fall, did they? May it never be. But by their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make them jealous. Now if their transgression is riches for the world and their failure is riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their fulfillment be? But I'm speaking to you who are Gentiles, and as much as that I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. If somehow I might move to jealousy my fellow countrymen and save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the first piece of dough is holy, then the whole lump is, and if the root is holy, the branches are too. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you being a wild olive were grafted in among them and became partakers with them of the rich root of the olive tree, don't be arrogant toward the branches, but if you are arrogant, remember, it is not you who support the root, the root supports you. And you will say then, well, branches were broken off so I could be grafted in. Quite right. They were broken off for their unbelief, but you stand by your faith. So don't be conceited, but fear. If God didn't spare the natural branches, he won't spare you either. Behold then the kindness and severity of God to those who fell severity. But to you, God's kindness, if you continue in his kindness, otherwise you'll be cut off. And they also, if they don't continue in their unbelief, they will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. If you were cut off from what is by nature a wild olive tree, and you were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated tree, how much more will these who are natural branches be grafted back into their own olive tree? I don't want you to be unaware, brothers, of this mystery, so that you won't be conceited in your own estimation. A partial hardening has come to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved. It's a chapter that many people for 2,000 years, much of the church just didn't, just, didn't, just didn't read it. But it's very clear here. And all Israel will be saved. Not that, don't, don't, you know, there are all these false doctrines. Don't get into the idea, some people say, well, the Jewish people are saved because they're Jewish. They're not saved anymore. You're all saved the same way. It's saying in the end, those who are the remnant will come back, will be saved, all saved. But they, they get saved the same way anybody gets saved. What will their acceptance be? It will be nothing short of life from the dead, resurrection when they all come in. Now we know that, you know, that's final moment. That's going to happen. The entire creation is going to be affected when the Jewish people come in. Jesus said, I'm not coming back until they greet me. So it's all hanging on that day. But they will be turning to the Lord even before that day. Again, you have the 144,000. You have other things along that. And so you'll see a pattern that happens. The first step was God brought Jewish believers back into existence. The next step is to make them a blessing 
as they were in the beginning. You know, for centuries, the church has been laboring to fulfill the Great Commission, the harvest. But here's the mystery. It's all in the ancient Hebrew year. Those, listen, those who began the harvest around at Pentecost time, Shavuot, every year it's the same thing. Those who begin it around Shavuot, Pentecost, they're the same ones who have to complete it. So what does that mean prophetically if the age is like a Hebrew year? Those who began the harvest 2,000 years ago have to complete it at the end. The Jewish people. Now, of course, it's a, in this case, it's not the same year. It's a whole, there's 2,000 years have gone by. This is a whole different generation. But it's saying that the harvest cannot be completed until the original harvesters come, harvesters come back into the harvest. To find out how you can receive more of Jonathan's teachings, to receive special free gifts, or get in touch, go to hopeoftheworld.org or call toll-free 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's 1-800-937-4821. You can also get more at Jonathan Kahn's Facebook page or write us direct at Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey, 07644, USA. Hope of the World is dedicated to the goal of spreading God's Word and salvation to every land and people. We do this by spreading the Word throughout the world and sponsoring compassion projects to the most poor and needy around the earth. To get in touch or have a part in God's work, just write to Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey, 07644, USA. Or go to hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's 1-800-937-4821.